When we look at a beam of light, it may look simple. But within every beam of light is a story of its origin, what kind of substance it came from, and what kind of substance it might have passed through. Examining the physical properties of materials by analyzing the energy that interacts with them is called spectroscopy. The concept not only works for visible light, but everything from radio waves to high-energy gamma rays. It even works for ranges of molecule energies and weights. When we spread out a beam of energy or particles into a distribution, it gives us important information. Spectroscopy plays an enormous role in all our lives. It serves as the foundation for nearly all our technology, from heavy industry and electronics and computers to biomedical research and medical technology. From a chemist perspective, often we're interested in looking at the structures of molecules. So we can learn a lot about the structure of the molecule, how those atoms are arranged together. If we're looking at sort of a bulk material, we can learn about the materials or the compounds that make up that material from using spectroscopy. Things that we use in everyday life that are, you know, actually use spectroscopy. So the barcode scanner at your grocery store is actually based on spectroscopy. The weather radar system uses spectroscopy to analyze precipitation patterns. If you've ever been in a hospital bed, the pulse ox meter, that uses spectroscopy to analyze the oxygen levels in, in your blood. Spectroscopists are used in all kinds of technological fields, anywhere from pharmaceutical analysis to analyzing the impurity levels on a silicon chip for a computer. We have spectroscopists that are looking at the molecular makeup of interstellar space. Really, we use spectroscopy for all kinds of types of analyses and, and supporting of technology and technological innovations. As a professional organization, the Spectroscopy Society of Pittsburgh has promoted advancements in science and technology for more than 65 years. As one of the leading industrial centers for over a century, Pittsburgh found itself as a natural birthplace for such a professional society. Well, anybody who worked in the field of applied spectroscopy or analytical chemistry, Pittsburgh was the place to be. And it was because of all the heavy industry that existed in Pittsburgh in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. For example, all of the steel mills in Pittsburgh had spectroscopy laboratories because the characteristics of steel are determined by the content of carbon and all the other alloying elements that are mixed with the carbon in making the steel out of, out of pig iron, copper, nickel, chromium, various other things. And emission spectroscopy was the key to determining exactly what was in each batch of steel, and that's what determines the particular qualities of the steel batch that they're trying to make. The Spectroscopy Society of Pittsburgh owes its existence to a pioneering physicist named Mary Warga. When war started in Europe in 1939, the demand for Pittsburgh steel surged. Mary Warga, a physics professor at the University of Pittsburgh and an expert on spectroscopy, became involved in the war effort by helping metallurgists ensure the quality of steel. She started organizing small meetings on applied spectroscopy that eventually came to be known as the Pittsburgh Conference. After the war, she formed collaborative meetings with other spectroscopists so they could keep abreast of the new developments that were happening extremely quickly during this time period. She also developed courses and she mentored thousands of, of spectroscopists in the area in helping them improve their craft. Mary Warga was the founder of the Spectroscopy Society of Pittsburgh and she was really a trailblazer for women chemists. She worked in the field of chemistry at a time when it was dominated mostly by men. And so she has made my path as a woman scientist and the path of lots of other women much easier because of what she's done for the field and for women in the field. Mary Warga's Pittsburgh Conference grew into an annual event known today as PitCon, a major convention that connects scientists, engineers, and technology companies from all over the world. PitCon serves as a world marketplace for the exchange of ideas and inventions, stimulating innovation and keeping researchers up to date on all the latest technologies. Well, PitCon provides an opportunity for scientists from all over the world who work in laboratory research to keep abreast 
of the newest developments, newest techniques, newest applications. And it gives companies from all over the world that market to the laboratory science field an opportunity to display their newest instrumentation and their newest techniques. So there's a very strong collaboration between the exhibiting companies and the researchers that come to PitCon and that, that collaboration goes a long way to developing new scientific ideas, new scientific applications, new scientific instrumentation. The mission of the Spectroscopy Society of Pittsburgh, along with the Society for Analytical Chemists of Pittsburgh, is to encourage continued scientific discovery and technological innovation and to promote science education. The two sister societies, Society of Analytical Chemists of Pittsburgh and the Spectroscopy Society, uh, come together and host this uh, world-renowned conference known as PitCon or the Pittsburgh Conference. Um, and the revenue stream from that conference enables us to really fund science education um, in our region and also throughout the nation. The mission of the Spectroscopy Society of Pittsburgh is the promotion and education in the field of science in all respects. And they do this through monthly technical meetings where they bring in renowned scientists to deliver technical lectures for the membership of the two societies and also for the general public. They do it by providing science workshops at the elementary level, the middle school, the high school level, and the college level. They provide equipment grants at all those levels as well. They offer starter grants for new researchers. They provide funding for uh, public television science programs for the Carnegie Library, for the Carnegie Museum. There's practically nothing that the societies will not do to promote science and science education. My name is Mark Hubert. I'm a volunteer for the Spectroscopy Society of Pittsburgh. And by my normal working job, I'm an assistant principal for Chartiers Valley School District. Being in education, I've learned firsthand what these wonderful programs they can do really help benefit students, benefit education, and help promote science in general. So we've been around now for over 60 years here, and over those 60 years, we have really kept our, to our mission of supporting science education. I can tell you the way that I first got involved with the Spectroscopy Society was through our elementary science Olympiad. And as I brought that to my school, I did it with about 250 students my first year. And it was a day where the kids just lit up and they shined. And they got to apply everything they learned in science to really fun, hands-on activities and real-world experiences for them. And seeing how the Spectroscopy Society allowed us to have that opportunity through their grants and their ideas and their suggestions, it was a phenomenal experience for the kids. And it is something now that comes back year after year at the school. And the kids, the parents, the teachers, everybody looks forward to it every year because they know what a powerful experience it is for the kids. And when you just do that and you see the smile on the kids' faces and how much they're connecting to it, it's just probably one of the best feelings that there is and it just really shows you what science can do for kids and how they can apply stuff and really enjoy that.